Hello, hello, my friends. Welcome back to Hold Up, Let Me Explain. I'm your host, Nicole. And on today's episode, I wanted to talk about something that someone called me a few months ago. I'm going to tell you. And to be honest with you, I wasn't even offended when they told me this. Honestly, I, I truly wasn't. But it did have me thinking about my childhood and how I've adjusted to, I guess, become this way. So let me explain. The thing that the person called me a few months ago was, or that I was, or am, a whitewashed Latina. Again, guys, I was not offended. I actually thought it was kind of funny. She said it more with, like in a bigger context, so maybe it's kind of unfair to take it out of context because it sounds quite offensive, but it, I, I truly didn't take it that way. And I guess the way that I really like defined it in my mind would be to say that I'm a watered down Latina, which I guess to some degree is kind of true, but let me explain. So, the way this is going to make better sense is if I start from the beginning. So let's begin. My parents, so my mom is Puerto Rican. My dad is Dominican. My dad is from Dominican Republic. My mom was actually born in the Bronx, but grew up in Puerto Rico, spoke the language, speak Spanish. That was her first language. And then eventually moved to New York. So when she moved to New York, she did not know English at all. She ended up teaching herself English by reading the newspaper. She met my dad from her old job or at the job she was working at the time. And then they had me. So they got married. Um, my dad, again, I don't know if I even said it. So he was from, he's from Dominican Republic. He, they met in New York and my dad also did not speak any English. My dad, I think his education went as far as like high school. My mom got her GED. Now, when they got married and they had me, they, their plan was to teach me Spanish. Spanish was supposed to be my first language. However, in the event that my mom was reading the newspaper trying to learn English, she read that kids that didn't speak English were not getting the same education in school as the kids that were fluent in English speaking or speaking English. Like kids who knew Spanish that didn't speak English were not getting the same education as the kids who spoke English first. Okay. So because my mom had gotten her GED and my dad didn't really have like a big education, education was very important. They're like, listen, like we live in America now, like we live here, we want our kids to have the best education possible. So we're gonna have her speak English first and then eventually we'll teach her Spanish after that. Well, unfortunately, the older I got, the harder it was. They did attempt to send me to Dominican Republic for the summer to learn in, uh, Spanish. This was when I was like eight years old. I didn't even last three weeks out there. I was way too homesick. I wanted to come back home almost immediately. Like I, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. So I never learned. And the older I got, the harder it was for me to really pick it up because I felt embarrassed and shy. And trust me, I know enough like I know enough to get by I know enough to like kind of have a conversation but I do stumble on some words I get a lot of my I think like my pronouns wrong like my tengo tenga um tiene like those transition words those aren't transition words I don't think but other words like that I tend to say a little incorrectly so again I hold back and I don't speak the language fluently but Education was a really big thing for my parents growing up, so that's why I never learned this, the language. Now, living in New York, at least at the time when I was growing up, which was like late 90s, early 2000s, like at least in the Bronx, Puerto Ricans was like everything. Like you was the shit if you were Puerto Rican, right? All the buildings had the flags hanging. This was when Fat Joe and Big Pun was like really at it. I think Big Pun already had died, but Fat Joe was like really celebrating the Puerto Rican pride. J-Lo was at her peak. So of course, you know, Puerto Rican pride. She was always, you know, Mark Anthony, like Puerto Ricans in New York was like, like I swear, like people will cap and be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, Mexican, Ecuadorian, Peruvian, Colombian, Brazilian, Black, uh, Italian, and Puerto Rican. Like everywhere you went, somebody was like a little bit of Puerto Rican somehow. And that was like, that was like a flex, right? 
so I growing up in the Bronx I was always very proud of like being half Puerto Rican and half Dominican and Dominicans too it was the same thing like Dominicans still had their own pride and and it's kind of funny because like also in New York like Puerto Ricans and Dominicans it was always like this rivalry I really don't know how it is now I think we're kind of over it maybe not I don't know but like me being both again was still a flex like the same pride I had for being Puerto Rican was the same pride I had for being Dominican. All of my best friends were Dominican. My entire building was basically all Dominicans. I'm closer to my dad's family. My dad's Dominican. So I feel like culturally, I feel more connected to being Dominican than Puerto Rican, ironically. But still, always super proud of like where I came from. And then of course, like the New York style was like you wear Tim's, high tops, uptown or uptowns, um, white Nikes. Uh, curly hair lip liner big hoops with your name on it like that was the flex like that was the style that was like quote unquote the culture right so when i moved to florida we lived in miami first and living in miami was like the first time i think i ever tr saw true diversity because in new york a lot of neighborhoods you'll find more or less like the same ethnicity or the same culture you know and that's exactly like where I live like it was very rare that you would see any other kind of Hispanic like it was either Mexican maybe Ecuadorian definitely Puerto Rican definitely Dominican if you ever saw like a white person they were either Jewish Italian or like Irish maybe and that was like rare kind of like at least from where I lived in New York so moving to Miami, it was like the first time I met like Colombians, um, Peruvians, Brazilians, um, people from like the UK. Like to me, I was like, whoa, like I've never met anyone else that was like from a different culture. So it was like really exciting, like going to a brand new school, like learning about like other people. However, I quickly learned that because of the way that I dressed and because of the way that I acted, Mind you, in New York, this was like normal, like this is how you flex, right? When I moved to Miami, I quickly learned that my aesthetic was considered chonga. And that was an insult to be called a chonga in Miami. So I remember like feeling so like taken aback, like I wasn't bullied. Like I think that when I entered the new school or when I entered that school middle of the year, I was like this new person so like everybody wanted to know me I wasn't popular I wasn't popular but I think that because I had just come from New York and I was like the new girl like a lot of people wanted to know who the new girl was and I think because of that I made a lot of friends and and I think that's why I loved Miami because it was just so accepting ironically being also called the chonga but I remember like a few girls were telling me like oh like you kind of look like a chonga and I was like, what? And they're like, oh, yeah, like ghetto girls that wear like big hoops and da 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 da. Like, they basically described my outfit as a chonga. And I realized in that moment, I was like, wait, I don't want to be a chonga. Like, what? And I learned that chongas were like the ghetto girls and a prep were like the uptight, stuck up girls that dressed preppy. And even though that was also kind of an insult, in some degree, it was also like, you would rather be called a prep than be called a chonga. Now listen, my friends. Around the time that I went to middle school in Miami was around 2006, 2007. That was the year that I moved to Florida. Again, a lot has changed. I don't know what the slang is now. I don't know what it's like now at that middle school in Miami. I don't know what's cool, what's not. I just, I try to be cool at my age now and like what's cool now. <laughs> I don't know what that's like now for kids in middle school. At the time, this is what it was. So I'm not saying that like, because I didn't want to be called the chunga, I became a prep. But I started to really see the difference on how these girls were being treated, like how girls were being respected, who respected who and how and how they dressed and how they acted. And I remember like going to the mall a lot with my mom, just kind of walking around. We didn't have a lot of money to like go shopping. But I remember that was like the first time I learned what Juicy Couture was and like Hollister and American Eagle and like Abercrombie and Fitch and like just like other cool stores. <clears throat> 
even Forever 21, like Forever 21 was like slowly, I think at around that time, like becoming like an actual store that people wanted to shop at. And I started to really see the difference on how these girls dressed. And it's so funny because like wearing Tim's and wearing Uptowns was like, like girls didn't wear that in Miami. They wore ballet flats and strappy sandals and like cute polos and like mini skirts and you know, like cute, like, I remember just like seeing that and like the way they did their hair and the way they just like held themselves and I just realized like wait I I kind of want to dress like that like I don't want to dress like this like I don't want to dress ghetto I don't want to dress like a chonga I don't want to I don't want people thinking that of me like I could be cute like that like I could rock that skirt I could rock that belt I want to wear that purse and I watch a lot of TV and again at the time like I was obsessed with the girls next door which was a reality show based on the Playboy bunnies at the Playboy mansion if you if you're no, if you know reality TV I'm pretty sure you remember the girls next door Holly Madison Kendra Wilkson Brittany something forgive me I love her though anyway they used to wear juicy couture purses knee-high socks cute little mini skirts and I feel like I was at that age where I was like okay wait like I kind of want to be that too. I read a lot. I started like, I wasn't like talking in that New York slang anymore. I was talking more like, not the way that they spoke in Miami, but just more like I enunciated my words. I just, like I adjusted in other words, right? So I remember after that, we lived in Miami for a little bit and then we moved over to Kissimmee. Now, Kissimmee is where I live now. Like, this is where I've lived now for basically the past 15 years. And I went to, I don't want to say that it was an all-white high school. I really don't want to say that, but it kind of was. Like, there wasn't that much diversity. Like, I guess based on ethnicity-wise, like, yeah, sure, there was a lot of Brazilians, a lot of Colombians, a lot of Puerto Ricans, a lot of um, Moroccans, a lot of people from the UK, like, you know, from the other side, or even just people that were from Florida, like, but if you look at, like, skin tone, which is what I'm trying to say, is it was a lot of fair skin, and I've said it before, in my high school at the time, I kid you not, there were, like, six to seven black kids, like, there were barely any color, like, I was, I'm, listen, I'm not saying, relax, I was one of the very few tanned girls in the school, because even, like, the Puerto Ricans that, were in my high school were also very like fair skin. A lot of Brazilians are fair skin, you know? But I remember going to that high school and like, I remember at that time I was feeling like, okay, high school is like a different vibe. Like I want them to know that I'm tough, that, you know, I'm from New York. So I started to like slowly transition back to like, how I dressed in New York, right? But it was mainly so that I guess in my brain I could be like respected, which is like so cringy thinking about. But again, this is like the mind of a 16 year old or 15, 14 year old at the time when I started high school. So I wore my Tims again. I didn't really wear makeup at all. Like I don't think I started wearing like eyeliner until sophomore year. But at the time I was like crunching up my hair, being very like tough and like whatever, right? That quickly like went away because wearing Tim's in like this hot ass weather is not cute. So like I eventually just like didn't wear Tim's. Not to say that Tim's make you look tough, but like I had to adjust the style a little bit. And at the time too, my school didn't have uniform just yet. They started implementing uniform sophomore year. So freshman year, I was like wearing tight jeans, little belly shirt, whatever, who cares? The point is I, when people would ask me like, oh, where are you from? I would be like, oh, I'm from New York, but I'm Puerto Rican and Dominican, right? So they're like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. I started to see the Puerto Ricans I went to school with. And now the Puerto Ricans I went to school with were like a group of students, and there were a lot of them, but it seemed like segregated. And what I mean by that is like, it seemed like all the Puerto Ricans hung up with each other and all the other students were kind of like in their own little cliques. But it seemed like all of the Puerto Ricans that hung out together were all from like the island. So they all spoke Spanish. They rarely spoke English. And in my high school, they were called the Miramiras. 
Now, if you're unfamiliar what a mira is, mira means look in Spanish, right? And I guess it's a habit of Puerto Ricans that when they're talking, they say, mira, 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 like pay attention, like I'm talking to you, right? So in my high school, the mira miras, that's what they would call the Puerto Ricans. I'm not sure if they were offended by this. I don't know if that's what they called themselves. I don't know if that's what other people called them, but that's just what they were called in my high school. So the moment that I would say like, oh, I'm Puerto Rican and Dominican, they'll be like, oh, so you're like a mira mira. And I'm like, what? No, no. Like, I don't even speak Spanish. Like, what? And I started to see why they would say that because these students in my high school were very, like, obnoxious and loud. And I get it because they were being judged by a lot of the students. So I think that in their defense, they just were like, oh, okay, you don't like the way I act because I'm Puerto Rican? Great. I'm going to turn it up a hundred times more and make you feel uncomfortable, and I'm going to do it on purpose. And that's kind of like how it was. Again, this is high school. These are minds of 15-year-olds. Like, everything is, like, extreme and, like, oh, you don't like that? Well, I'm going to do it more to piss you off, you know? And that's just kind of the vibes. But it was so weird to me because it's like, I remember, I remember feeling so proud, right? And being so like, yeah, I'm Puerto Rican and Dominican. And then I go to this high school and it's like, I see the way like these Puerto Ricans act. And I was like, wait, but I don't act like that. And the Puerto Ricans in New York don't fucking act like that. I mean, yeah, they're loud and obnoxious too, but it, it felt more like for pride, right? Because like in New York, there's the Puerto Rican Day Parade and that shit is fucking lit, okay? So like, that's where it's rooted from. Like, it's just exciting. But somehow in my high school, it just seemed different. It was like, nobody respected it. Everybody thought it was annoying. I mean, I even thought it was annoying. And it even made me feel like, damn, like, I don't wanna sit here and be like, I'm ashamed, but it almost made me feel like, I needed to water down being Puerto Rican. And I don't want to say that either because again, like I don't act like that. Like I don't act like that. Like I don't speak Spanish. Like I don't relate to them at all. They were Puerto Ricans, but from the country. So, and I think that's why they all sort of gravitated towards each other because they were essentially from the same culture. I was from like a different culture. I was, I was what you would call a New Yorican, like a Puerto Rican that lived in New York. Like, even the songs that we listened to in New York that celebrated like Puerto Rico, Puerto Ricans in Puerto Rico don't even know those songs. Like I've seen TikToks of like Puerto Ricans, like side by side, one from the island, one from New York, listening to songs and they would have to like step, like they would have to, go, I don't know. Have you seen those TikToks where it's like the screen has like little dots in the center and it'll be like, songs from the 1990s or from the 90s and then songs from the early 2000s and then like if you know the song then you stand under where it would say the 90s if you know the song and if you didn't then you'd go back in the middle until you you know i feel like i don't want to over explain but i feel like at this point you should know what i'm talking about well i've seen tiktoks with like puerto rican songs where people from the island versus people from new york that were puerto rican would then stand side by side and move over to the song they knew so what i'm saying is not technically like unheard of like this is an actual thing so again i would see these puerto ricans from the island and i'm like i don't like even the slang words like i didn't know that a mira was even like a thing like i know that mira meant look you know but it but again like i i barely knew so I feel like because I didn't want to be associated to that, I then started to change my style again, but more to what was in style in my high school. So a lot of the girls, again, they would wear like fun bracelets, flats, like no one really wore Jordans, no one wore, um, wore Tim's, nobody wore like, nobody wore like cool sneakers like they did in New York, which was kind of nice for me because my mom didn't have a lot of money for me to keep up with like the latest sneakers or the latest Jordans so the fact that like what was in style were like ballet flats and strappy sandals like was like a godsend honestly because like that made it easier for me to like I guess fit in but one of the things that the girls that were like in that Mira Mira clique would do would wear their hair really curly 
And I guess because like me wearing my hair super curly really made me look Spanish, I started to straighten my hair because I just didn't want to be associated with that. And I feel kind of guilty admitting that out loud, but I'm not going to lie to you. Like I started to straighten my hair all the time and it sucks because like it is humid in Florida. Like I'm recording this episode outside and I kind of did my hair and I'm already looking at it through the camera and I'm like, ew, it's getting frizzy. Whatever. I don't care. I'm home. But like I would wear my hair straight and it would get so frizzy. It was so embarrassing. Like I would look like a poodle by the end of the school, like by the end of class. And it's so funny because that's actually how I got my name Puffin because my best friend in high school, like one time she saw me come out of class and like my hair was so frizzy and she's like you're looking like a puffin puffer puffy puff like she just said all those words together so after that she just called me puffin because of my hair being so puffy and then that's when i ended up calling my cat puffin because i named him after me so that's just like a little fun fact nobody called me puffin in high school i'm just saying my friend called me puffin in high school <laughs> so anyway but I would still straighten my hair. I would wear what was in style and what like all the kids were wearing. Like I didn't, I didn't, I guess, dress Spanish, I guess. Like, and I'm only saying that by comparison to the Spanish kids I went to high school with. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Let's move on. So I remember after like changing my look and like really adjusting to my environment at the time, I remember like I didn't really speak in slang. I, like I said before, I enunciated my words more. And I remember visiting New York again um, after, after freshman year. I was about to start sophomore year. That summer I went to New York to visit my sister. And I remember I was um, at her house and at the time she roomated with like two girls and you know they're all from New York and I guess like their father came to the house to visit and I met him and you know just like straight up Puerto Rican New York like alpha male you know like really big guy you know takes care of his kids he's a cool guy like I respect him as a person of course but I remember when he was talking to me I guess like he was like shocked that I was Puerto Rican and Dominican, you know, I'm my sister's little sister. And I guess I, the way that I spoke, the way that I talked, like whatever, like the way that I dressed, he like looked at me and was like, you talk like a white girl. And I remember that pissed me off. And I was like, no, I don't. I talk like I'm educated. And he, and like, I even surprised myself when I said it, because it's like, listen, like at the end of the day, like, Talking in slang and talking in this way might be cool, like, when you're with good company. But from transitioning from New York to, like, other places, I realized, like, talking like that, behaving like that, acting like that is not cute. Like, you're not going to be respected that way. And I learned that very quickly. So how do you become respected is if you talk like you know what you're talking about and if I enunciate my words and I hold myself in a higher standard then I will be respected and that's all I wanted I just wanted to be respected so I adjusted right so for him to be like oh you talk like a white girl it's like what so now so now I'm a white girl because I want to talk like a like better I guess like so anyway so yeah, I remember when I was doing that, like that's how people started to respond to me. And then, and it still happens now, like even years later, like the way that I talk to people, like when I say, oh, I'm from New York. And okay, I work at an Irish restaurant, right? And a lot of times people would like talk to me and they'll be like, oh, where's your accent from? Are you from Ireland? And I'm like, bitch, what? I don't have that. I don't have that response. But I'll be like, no. I'm not from Ireland. I'm actually from New York. And they're like, oh, okay. Like, they kind of, like, are surprised. And I'm like, oh, you know, I lost my accent a long time ago, but it comes out when I'm driving and when I'm angry. And then they kind of giggle. But I feel like when I'm in New York sometimes, or, like, if I'm around certain friends, like, I feel like certain words will come out, like, talk or, like, oh, like, oh, oh I was walking to the store or, yeah, like, I'm going to walk the dog like I don't know like I don't really talk like that but sometimes like it'll come out if I'm talking to certain people um 
I feel like I have my own accent. People say that I have one. I don't know what it sounds like, obviously, because I just talk. Uh, but people say that they can hear that I'm like Spanish, maybe because my mom has an accent, my dad has an accent, a lot of my friends have accents, you know, like, I don't know. I notice that when I talk to people, I adapt to their, to their accents. I notice that like, depending on who I talk to. And I think that's because I just communicate with a lot of people. But yeah, that's how people respond to me when I say like, oh, I don't speak Spanish. They're like, and you're Puerto Rican and Dominican. Or like if I say I'm from New York, but I don't really talk like I'm from New York anymore because I've like trained my words. I've trained myself to speak differently. So I feel like that too, like people respond to me kind of funny that way. I one time had a, uh, oh my God. Okay. So again, I work at an Irish restaurant, right? Tell me how I had this girl one time. This is relevant. I promise. I had this girl come in and she was telling me how like, oh, it, it was St. Patrick's day. And she was like so excited to be there. She's like, oh yeah, like I'm Irish. Like I love Irish food. I da 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 da. Like I know all the beers on tap. Like she was very proud of her culture. Great. So, I mean, she wasn't from Ireland. She was definitely from America, but like, I guess she was like first, second generation or first generation Irish or whatever the fuck. I don't know what, it, whatever. And when I was taking her order, she was like, oh, but can I have that with no cabbage? And I was like, yeah, no problem. And she's like, I know I'm Irish and don't like cabbage. And I'm like, it's okay, girl. I'm Hispanic and I don't like avocado. This girl looked at me like, what? You're Spanish and don't like avocado? What kind of Spanish girl are you? Bitch, you just fucking said you don't like cabbage and you're Irish. Like, how the fuck are you going to judge me? I didn't even judge you. Like... I like kind of laughed and I was like, I know, right? Ha ha ha. And I walked away. But I remember going to the computer station like the fucking audacity. But again, that's what it's like working at a restaurant, right? Like you get people that will come at you sideways and you're just like, bitch, you lucky I need your tip. You're lucky I need the fucking money. <laughs> like I just kind of like ignored it. But anyway, but yeah, like it's, it's, it's kind of funny the way that I do get judged in different ways. Like that being like a whitewashed, watered down Latina. I do. And it's, and this is the thing too. Like, I'm still very proud of being Puerto Rican and Dominican. Like, I love it when people look at me and they try to guess my ethnicity. And then like, I tell them what I am. I feel like very exotic when I say it. It's not like when you, if you were to go to my neighborhoods in New York, where I come from, it, it ain't special, you know, <laughs> like. Okay, like, oh, you're Puerto Rican, then Dominican. Like, I can deadass be like, oh, yeah, I'm from the Heights. And they'll be like, oh, so you're Dominican? And I'm like, yeah, well, half, you know, like, yeah, like, the, like, if I tell you where I'm from, like, people just automatically assume. But it's still kind of cool when I get to know, like, new people from, like, different other, like, from other places, and I tell them my ethnicity, and they're just, like, kind of amazed by it. So, you know, there's that. You know, but at the end of the day... Don't ever, like, if you are like me, where you're Hispanic, but you don't speak Spanish, or you feel more connected to other styles and aesthetics, and you want to better yourself in different ways, like, don't ever let anybody judge you or make you feel like you need to be confined in a certain box or stereotype, because I feel like that's what was happening around me, like, I was fitting into a stereotype that I didn't want to be considered and I didn't like that and through the years of like finding myself and coming to myself because again you know all of this these transitions were happening at a very like pivotal age you know when you're in high school everything feels extreme and you just want to fit in and you don't want to be judged and you just want to be yourself but like you want to be accepted at the same time like I felt all of those things. So if you are someone that have experienced that, like, I get it. I get it to the maximum. But don't let anybody make you feel like you need to be confined in a box or you need to stay in your stereotype. Or if they feel like you're not embracing your culture by repressing, you know, like even the fact that I straightened my hair and didn't like embrace my net, like my curly hair, you know, it's. I was also judged by that like oh why don't you wear your hair curly like why do you do your hair like that and it's just like because I like doing my hair like this like I like my hair straight like I think that like 
I yes I have curly hair but to be honest like I never took care of it even in high school like middle school I, all I ever did was hairspray gel but like that crunchy fucking gel like the kind of gel that makes your hair look hard and then like if you move it too much it starts to flake like literally that was me in middle school like and then in high school I did the crunchy hair with the straight bangs like I did that too like I always tried to kept, keep up with the trends but believe it or not I never liked my hair curly I always liked it straight and I did that and by doing it so much like I fucked up my hair in a way like I can't really do my hair curly like it doesn't look cute and I've attempted many times to try to like take care of it so it could look you know like oh let me let me do something different doesn't work out that way so I ended up doing keratin okay shout out to keratin I live in Florida where it's humid all the time so it comes in handy okay but even like that like I embrace my culture in different ways like I visit my family in Dominican Republic a lot of times I mean I haven't been in two years but I love going to Dominican Republic I listen to Spanish music I eat Spanish food I always try to learn like traditional recipes so that I can cook for my family for my boyfriend because he loves it when I throw down in the kitchen like all the times I've ever had like couples dinners or like Christmas dinners I always make penil I always make a con gandules like anytime I have like friend get togethers I always make sure to bring like brugal or coquito like I'm always like I'm always embracing my culture in ways that I feel deserve to be celebrated like in the ways that I like to celebrate it you know and I'm okay with that. I do need to learn Spanish for the sake of like being able to communicate with my family and still be able to connect with them. But yeah, like, what the fuck? Like, just because I don't act like a certain type of Puerto Rican or because I don't speak the language or because I don't look, Sp I mean, I think I look Spanish. Like, I feel like when people look at me, they know that I'm obviously not a white girl. <laughs> Like, obviously, like, I look like a little foreign, at least. Um, but, you know, and it's just, but yeah, like, and so fucking what? Like, listen, again, I feel like I'm, like, jumping around. Don't let anybody make you feel a type of way. If they want to believe that you're a whitewashed, watered-down Latina, Latina X, or you're not Spanish enough, or you're not blank enough, whether that's Mexican enough, Puerto Rican enough, Dominican enough, Ecuadorian enough fuck it like who cares let you be your own version of your culture and at the end of the day the world is changing everybody is blending we're all blending together like at some point none of us is going to be purebred okay